like that. Well, I was gonna no because I was thinking like obviously you weren't gonna use it, so I'm thinking you're gonna put like that fucking thing on a shelf or something like that and put it yeah. in a fucking glass case. Don't fucking think I won't. <laughs> I'm crazy like that. Who made it? Do you know? Or was it a no namer? It was a no name. <laughs> it, and, and honestly, it looked like it was just a whatever mouse mm. that someone colored, like it, that a company painted. It made it look nicer. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I was like, y'all fucking miss me with this bullshit. Like, it, it looks ridiculous. But I needed it. Yeah, right. Life. Of course. But, but my wife was like, no, Adam. I was like, fuck you then. Was it that expensive? No, it was like two bucks. Fuck that. But it's because I have a tendency of buying stupid shit and then there's no room anymore. Like, it's just, it's just the house is full of shit. Samantha's 18? Yeah, and kick her out to make space. Exactly. That's when you start knocking the kids off uh, euphemistically. And, you know, and you start so knocking the kids off. Metaphorically. Yeah. So, oh. <laughs> You're like, oh, because I had an idea already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome, everybody, to the Lazy Geeks podcast, our weekly podcast that discuss top news from the world of entertainment, gaming, comics, and technology. This is for the week of April 29th, 2018. I'm Stephen Vargas. I'm Adam Riley. I can't believe it. April's already ending. I know. Like, this, this fucking year. And you know what, though? I'm kind of happy it's moving quickly because I'm almost out of my vacation time at work. And oh, really? uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because I was doing doctor's appointments and mm. stuff like that. So Can't you use sick time for that? Um, yeah. <laughs> you can't schedule sick time. And I only get six days of sick time for the year. Wow. Welcome to a red state. Um, I get three weeks of vacation, though, and I get... <laughs> that just seems odd. <laughs> I know. And I get three... Well, I'll tell you why. And I get three days of personal time. So the reason why they give you so much vacation is you have to plan that. Right. If I call out and I'm out of sick time, I can't use my vacation time. Mm. So it's like I'm kind of screwed hmm. either way. So... Well, the only thing I got to say about Adam, like Andre the Giant, he has two hearts and two rows of teeth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, if you guys out there haven't seen Andre the Giant, the documentary on HBO, you're doing yourself a disservice. Um, I actually, uh, I heard about it and I was, I was wanting to watch it and the other day it happened to come on when I was watching it. Oh man, it so makes you like... It it just reinforces what you always thought of Andre the Giant, you know, like just a sweet, nice guy. Um, but, yeah. But they, you know, they talk to Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan, you know, every pretty much anybody that's still alive that wrestled back in the day. And then, of course, you know, they have Vince McMahon and, you know, and then you they give you even kind of the history of wrestling, like all the different districts, you know, or regions that had their own mm -hmm. wrestling team and uh, the WWF. At the time, you know, it was uh, like New York and kind of north, like, like I think it went from what, like Maine to like, like f Pennsylvania or something like that. Like it was a, like a huge swath. And then you, they started combining everything when they got cable. But, you, you know, you're watching that and you're just kind of finding like everybody was like, oh, yeah, Andre was such a great guy. They go. The thing was, is that, you know, everybody knew you, you were performing. But you would never beat Andre, <laughs> like they're like you know that was like a like an impossibility. Like you, nobody, everybody knew they wouldn't beat him. They go, but he would make you look good losing. And they were talking about how he used to do that, and like Hulk, <laughs> Hulk goes, if you know he would work with you, you know, just help you, you know, and make you look good if he mm -hmm. liked you. If he didn't like you. He shit. just smashed you in the face. <laughs> he, goes, shit. he goes, shit was going to be rough. <laughs> and they said, like, he did not like Ric Flair. He said he just didn't like his mouth. And um, he just, you know, and then when they were going to match up, you know, they go, Ric Flair's walking around going, um, okay, so Andre, what what are we going to do? And Andre be like, get out of here. I don't want to see you. And he'd be like, um, okay. And then, like, the day of the fight, it's like, um, they'd be getting, like, really nervous. Like, um, okay, so what are we going to do? Get out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> but they were showing like all this footage and you're seeing like the Iron Sheik and you know um the Undertaker and you're just seeing all of these old you know um uh all of these old wrestlers and I'm just like 
God, it reminded me of when I was when I used to watch it as a kid, and just like I was like, oh God, it's nothing like that anymore. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I I um I actually remember I remember watching all this stuff like on reruns because I was more coherent <laughs> during the Attitude Era, which is fucking dope too. Right. But that was like the last era of wrestling where it was really worth a fucking damn. Like now, ever since they went to PG, it's like. Eh. But, um, man, back in the eighties, that shit was popping off, dude. <laughs> Andre the giant was the king, man. Oh, I'm telling yeah. you, I love that dude. And they were talking about how, um, he, uh, that like, you know, cause I remember back in the day, like in the eighties when I would w- be, watch Saturday morning cartoons and then the cartoons would end. Then, uh, you know, then on the channel, usually I think it was channel four that I would watch it or channel seven or something like that. And then it would switch over to soul trade. Yeah. Then that's when you knew, okay, cartoons are over. Then we would change the channel and then we'd get up to wrestling. So my, and my parents wanted to watch wrestling. So it was kind of like, okay, it was like one thing my mom, my dad and me got to do on Saturdays, <laughs> just sit and watch, you know, wrestling for an hour or what have you. But, uh, oh man, it was, it was such HBO does some great shit when they do documentaries they 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 really make them entertaining and really make them uh very informative so if you guys haven't watched it yet do watch it i was meaning to check it out this weekend but i just didn't have the time but i i now that i have the hbo now app right (laughs) i can watch it on the go wherever i may be (laughs) this episode brought to you by hbo (laughs) As well as Marvel, <laughs> you know. Cause Actually, I haven't even downloaded. I have every movie channel. I have none of the apps because I'm a fucking tool. <laughs> I have no idea why I haven't downloaded them. Yeah, all and I it's ha- funny too because we pay for that fucking cable, and all we watch is the movie channel. <laughs> but I found that MTV Classic. Oh <laughs> fuck yeah! I told you about them, dude. Shit, I was just going down the thing. I was like, oh, MTV Classic. Steve told me about that. Let me check this out immediately naughty by nature coming on motherfucker <laughs> big ass gold chain with a lock i said oh shit it's about to go down yeah. my wife is like are we gonna watch this all fucking day i'm like that's right <laughs> you say that like it's a bad thing <laughs> like right. what the fuck yeah because uh, yeah when i watch it too like during the during the weekdays like in the morning sometimes i'll uh, i when i change it over there it's like fucking vintage yo mtv raps and shit um in, like on the weekends, you have like I want the '80s, so it's all '80s videos and '90s videos. Just like I had it on one day, and my brother walks in my room and goes, "The fuck are you watching?" And I'm like MTV, and he goes, "I didn't think they showed music videos. This is MTV Classic." And I go, I'm "Not watching that other shit." But yeah, that, oh man, that MTV Classic is like if you got that, dude, yeah. you guys gotta watch that. But then my trip is, I'm I'm looking and I'm trying to see all the little channels I have. I've been cable in a while. There's a Nickelodeon music channel now. I'm like, is the fuck? Yeah, it's like a music <laughs> video. And basically it's just, it's normal music, but it's stuff that isn't, you know, over the top for kids. Mm. So I'm like, well, that's cool. So I showed the kids and then. um, So they play stuff know, like Bitch Don't Kill My Vibe. Bitch Don't, bitch don't Kill, kill my, my Vibe. I can feel your energy <laughs> from two planets away. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and they're playing like, um, you know. Hit her with the left, hit her with the right, <laughs> knock the pussy out like fight night. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, so, <laughs> but I was looking and uh, the movie channels are dope and I like the new cable thing. This isn't even on the show notes, but I don't give a fuck. <laughs> um, any t- so any movie, ch- any movie on the normal movie channel, so like the big four, HBO, Showtime, Cinemax, and what's the other one? There's another one. Well, there's stars. Then. Stars, that's, that's the one. If it's on that, it doesn't matter what time it's on. I can watch it whenever. Yeah. I didn't know that. So I'm like, oh, dope. <laughs> and then if it's playing and I press play, it will start it from the beginning. I'm like, yeah. this is cha- <laughs> my game has changed right now. <laughs> like, so, holy shit, we are in the future. <laughs> I was like, the future is dude. now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you very much, oh, Mr. <laughs> Roboto. <laughs> so I'm definitely going to download the app. Because I'm at work and I can probably watch shit while I'm fucking off because I'm going to be working some overtime this week. So Yeah, because I have – I think on my phone I only have HBO and Showtime because I usually <laughs> – this is kind of sad. I actually don't usually watch Showtime live. I usually go to their um, – I go to the um, Showtime app on my Xbox 
and uh, scroll through the movies and TV shows there <laughs> instead of actually yeah. watching them on there. But uh, yeah, so but it's it's it, yeah that's the reason why I have those. But yeah, I know it's like you know because what was it yesterday? I was trying to like I did a lot of shit yesterday, so then I was like, oh, I just want to kind of chill. So I was laying down and um, laying on my bed watching TV, and I'm like, God, there's nothing on. And then I found Roadhouse, and I'm like, Yes, <laughs> you're too stupid to have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> what if he calls? What if he calls my mom a whore? Is she? <laughs> I mean, be real with yourself. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> fucking love that movie. Yeah, I'm. I'm digging. I, I'm remembering. Like, being completely streaming is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But the one thing you do miss out on is just the. Channel flipping surfing. through channel shit yeah i'm like oh what the fuck like what's this <laughs> i guess you could do that with netflix too but you know and netflix is actually built into my cable box oh, right. so if i and i have a voice searching on my remote like, i got that <laughs> i got the new new shit so if i if i say something like a movie and it's on netflix it will show it to me and then i just hit okay and then it will send me to netflix oh nice so it's pretty cool so uh as we're recording we have breaking news uh, <laughs> it's finally happened after like the umpteenth time t-mobile and sprint have finally decided to merge and form unicron no uh <laughs> oh shit <laughs> i know it's just about to get real they ain't that fly to be doing shit <laughs> <Right>. like <that. laughs> they're doing some fucking uh go bot shit over there <laughs> yeah i know right <laughs> <laughs> So uh, they officially announced on Sunday that they will be uh, uh, merging. Uh, the combined company will be based out of Bellevue, Washington, and, and will be called T-Mobile because, well, you know, it was Sprint. Oh, so Sprint's just saying fuck off? Uh, yeah, Sprint's just becoming T-Mobile. Interesting. Yeah, so a current T-Mobile president, C, uh, current T-Mobile CEO, Jean Ligere, that shit talker on Twitter uh, mm-hmm. will run the um, the combined company while T-Mobile COO Mike Sivert will become the new company's COO and president. T-Mobile's majority owner uh, Dush, uh, was a Doshe uh, Telcom will hold forty two percent. I know. Don't, don't try to pretty it up. Your name is Joe Dirt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're going to hold on to forty two percent of the co- stake in the company while Sprint's majority owner SoftBank will hold twenty seven percent. Um, with public st- uh, stakeholding um, the rest, Sprint C- CEO Marcella Claire and SoftBank uh, CEO Meisho- Meyoshi San will sit on the combined com- board company or combined company's board. Um, they said the companies are said that they will be combining and they will be able to lower prices and take advantage of greater economic e- economies of scale. The two companies ha- have trailed their larger rivals. AT&T and Verizon and the merger between Sprint and T-Mobile will help give them a boost as they deploy their next generation 5G network across the country. Uh, they, the combined company will have nearly 100 million customers. Now, keep in mind, this still has to be, uh, this still has to be approved by uh, shareholders as well as the regulatory agencies uh, um, to make sure because they were the ones that... Uh, uh, canceled the AT&T T-Mobile merger that was supposed to happen back in 2011. God, it was that long ago? 2011? Yeah. Jesus. And actually, and you know, when I when I looked at that, I go, yeah, but that actually turned out to be good for T-Mobile because all that money that AT&T had to pay them if the deal didn't go through, um, they turned into number three. Yep. And Sprint, wah, wah, went down to Sprint, number four. But see, Sprint does have the infrastructure. It just needs to be updated. Yeah. So the merger is going to be very beneficial for both companies. Um, I'm, I mean, I, I don't see a reason to not like it. I don't think they're going to suddenly be number one. Right. You never know. <laughs> right. You know. And, and, you know, to be honest, I mean, I don't really see this as being an issue, like uh, a regulatory issue because of the fact that Sprint and T-Mobile don't really hold huge stakes. Like they're third, but they're like kind of like a little bit of a distant third. Right. You know? But then you also have like, it's kind of it's kind of easier to justify. So it's like, yeah, our, combined we have a hundred million, but how many does Verizon have? How many does AD, TNT have? Right. You know, so you, you, it's kind of the same bullshit. Yeah. And I think the government is usually okay as long as there's three. Yeah. 
you know, as long as, long as there's, there has to be some sort of healthy competition going on. The two smaller ones gobbling up each other to make a bigger one usually are they're going to be allowed more than number one devouring number four. You know, right. so I, I don't I don't see an issue probably with this with this going ahead. So it should be interesting to see what happens with this. And you know, maybe you Sprint customers will actually be happy you're holding on to Sprint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, that's actually a good point. Yeah. A lot of people have Sprint, and they're they're going to be able to utilize the T-Mobile um, towers pretty soon. So yeah, that's pretty so then, good. Yeah, so then you're going to be able to uh, actually see that that service go. You know, you're actually going to be able to use your phone. <laughs> right. It's, be, it's a nice feeling. It's, yeah. You know. Now, if AT and T can only get people to talk on their phones, um, so <laughs> hmm. uh, this I have this link in the show notes. It's from Mashable. And I call it taking fandom to the next level. Uh, so I'm just going to read this little article. And you definitely need to click the link because Ugh. it's like it's some it's some shit. It, one of these has me concerned. Uh, <laughs> uh, becoming a superhero in your bedroom takes plenty of work. And sometimes you need special powers on hand. Wink, wink. Uh, the <laughs> like these dildos, penetratables dubbed the indulgers created by Australian company Geeky sex toys that's original uh yeah. they, they're another in a series of guess who don't sue movie themed <laughs> guess who don't move, sue movie themed sex toys this time possibly related to the newest avengers film that's coming out after relate ruining our innocence with pokemon and dabbing on the dark side of star toys the indulgers collection contains products like moan in moan in here <laughs> <laughs> a Thor-like hammer that, of course, doubles as a dildo and comes even with a stand. Uh, there's also the arse reactor. You can only use it if you're worthy. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, there's also the arse reactor, uh, which is hardly subtle about what it's meant to be used for, and the glow-in-the-dark base, which could be handy. Yeah. Um, also, uh, look, we're not going to even bother explaining the rest of the toys here because it's quite obvious um, that <laughs> who they're um, who they're taking the Mickey out of. Uh, no price for guessing what Captain Anal is meant to look like. I don't. I feel offended that Captain America is a butt plug. I know, right? It's. I don't know. I just it shouldn't it be something else. Well, I mean, think about it. America cuz uh, like to fuck people in the ass. So, oh, like, stop it. <laughs> uh aging gets me off. <laughs> <laughs> I've ordered two. <laughs> <laughs> I've sold it out, okay? Yes. <laughs> and then, like, good old Yeah, and that you want Black Widow as a flashlight. I mean, that just makes sense, right? Yeah, why not? The incredible dong. Jesus. <laughs> Some of these girls ain't ready for this shit. <laughs> I mean, that's veiny as fuck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Must have been angry that day. The Infinity Fist. That just bothers me. You see, that? that's just like, okay. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm thinking public health issue is what I'm thinking <laughs> of with this one. <laughs> like, I get it, you know, but it's like, um, maybe we should just see if the FDA thinks that's, <laughs> that's a thing to have. <laughs> Oh my god. But yeah, you you definitely might want to check that out. And hey, if you're one of those uh, you know, geeky couples, hey, that may help spice up <laughs> yeah. spice up the evening, you know. All right, so our main story this week will be about the decade of Marvel and uh the uh tent poles that it's that it's produced. But before that, why don't we jump into some headlines? <laughs> Wow, that was loud. <laughs> <laughs> so in entertainment news this week, um, I'm not going to read the full article because it's a long article and it pretty much is just basically lists out the shady shit that MoviePass has been up to in the last year or so. Um, at, but this, I signed up for it back in November and it was an amazing deal, $9.99. On limit, basically, you can only see one 2D movie a day, and that was it. Those were your restrictions, and obviously, also the the theater had to accept it. Um, but since then, they got rid of the uh, unlimited model, and now they only offer you four movie pat more four movie uh, uh, four movies a month, 
Also, you get a three-month trial to our Heart Radio Access All Access subscription service, which I'm not exactly clear how it works, but I don't know why you would need an audio service to supplement for a movie ticket. It's just adding shit. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> no one wants iHeart Radio. <laughs> right. <laughs> and now you can't even be billed monthly. You have to pay three months in advance. And, what? Yeah. And, I remember you were you were all hyped about this service yeah, too. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, Patrick and and Peter and all and all of us had had Movie Pass or have Movie Pass. And yeah, now if you signed up, you have to pay three months in, in three month chunks instead of the the monthly service um and just rolled out just on release day of avengers infinity war no seeing the same movie more than once uh, <laughs> fucked all that bullshit yeah so um it's been known that the you know there's been expression of doubt about the company's business model which movie pass is losing money uh, pretty much on every ticket sold seemed too unsustainable but over the last few over the last six months or so they've changed their their modified their service um their conditions even um having some people to uh take photos of their ticket stubs and and um, submit them through the app to quote unquote prevent fraud um and uh you know they had they play try to play hardball with amc by not taking it in certain not allowing um the service at certain theaters also you know they were there were some where people were trying to watch movies like red swan or i tanya and they couldn't get tickets they, they their tickets you wouldn't be able to um purchase tickets through their app for that um but they were pushing movies like death wish and stuff and um those kind of movies so there's a lot of a lot of things that they've been doing in the last six months that while for me even though you look at it four tickets a month that's still you know 10 you know it's still pretty good you know uh, a pretty decent price under 10 bucks yeah. you know for a month for tickets but in the end it's like yeah but one of the things for me is that transparency you you may want to make sure the company's on the up and up but when you have them doing shady shit like that and then never mention it to anybody because like you see things pop up on in the media or like on the site i find it out through doing the news for the site in turn to turn around and and then we don't hear anything from the company until like nearly a week after the news has been all over the media and then of course they try to give their spin it's like no if you're doing a company you should pretty much be doing it beforehand saying hey guys we're going to let you know because you're our base you're our you know you're you're our um our consumers so we want to let you know before you hear it out in the news first so there's there's a lot of shady shit that's coming with that and it's actually making me reconsider that company because right now I still pay the 10 bucks a month. I still get the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the unlimited movies, but I have those restrictions and uh, it's kind of like, I don't particularly like the idea of having those restrictions and not being told by them at all. So, cause, yeah, cause even now, cause I decided I go, I'll look on it. So I went on the, the app to look at, um, the Avengers and it says, you already see, saw this movie. I was like, Wow. Well, I mean, it's and restrictions are fine. Like yeah. we're not running charities out here. Like everybody gets that, but make sure they're listed out. Yeah. And, and most companies are pretty good with that. Like it's like, hey, you know, we have this service. Um, but and I, I remember a perfect example is I just uh, signed up for. Um, I had so I have Prime, obviously, and I'm like, oh, I can use the music thing or whatever. Right. But Prime also has um, it's an additional eight dollars for their unlimited music. Right. And I was like, oh, that kind of sucks. But it's all listed out. Yeah. Like it's like this is what you get with just Prime. This is what you get with Unlimited. The choice is yours. Um, I went with Google, but still. Um, <laughs> right. And Google was the same. Everything was listed. This is what you get, which is everything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for the same well, fucking price. Even, even like Apple, you know, the Apple Music. They're like, yes. going, yeah, you get all of this stuff. This That's is what you get. People, people be watching Apple. Yeah. Apple can't be playing games. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, by the way, did we forget to tell you we got? Oh, yeah. See, see, that's our bad. <laughs> <laughs> but um, and this is they're with AMC, correct? No, they're they're their own company, but they've been having issues with AMC. But it makes me wonder because a couple of months ago, they they quote unquote said that they were trying to they're trying they were trying to work some kind of deal with amc and they decided to play hardball so all in their tear um their what do you call it um 
uh, tourist spots, they stopped allowing movie pass. So like Universal City Walk, you couldn't get um, movies there. I think uh, Santa Monica, some places in New York couldn't use movie pass. And then suddenly out of nowhere, they're like, oh, hey, you know, you can they work at all all AMCs. Now it hits that, oh, you're not you're only allowed to see movie once. I was wondering if they decided to say, hey, we're going to play hardball. But that was part of the deal. Like, well, you can't let them come in and see movies more than once. And then, you know, because I was like, I mean, that was like, going, that eh, kind of like it seems like that was kind of a deal that they brokered with AMC because I know they've been wanting yeah. a partnership and AMC has been like, fuck you. We want to do our own shit. Now, AMC. Oh, by the way, guys. AMC, if you have an AMC, five dollar ticket Tuesdays. Yeah, I just heard about that. Yeah, because um, my friend, uh, my friend Tori was telling me about that, and she's like, "Oh, I'm gonna, I might go see it." On, uh, she was talking about Infinity Wars. I'm like, "Yeah, but that ain't gonna work." And she's like, "Why?" And I'm like, "Cause it's new." Cause I was, cause remember the old deal back in the day, oh, yeah. you get cheaper tickets, but the, she's like, "No, it's for every movie." And yeah. I'm like, nah, "I don't know." Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it uh, is. I checked and she was right. Yeah, so I was like, that's fucking dope. Yeah. And then they have, they're also going to have a special deal. If you're a, a stitch, uh, you can even be, you have, you're required to have their stubs membership, but they have a free version and you can get the discount on the free yeah, version. Yeah, I have it. And, um, and I have the premium one, which they also, you also get $5 popcorn and drink combo on Tuesdays. So I'm like, Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like, going, well, I guess I know what other day I'm seeing Infinity War. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two, I mean that means Tuesday is going to be millions of people fucking there. Well, nobody goes real. Tuesday. <laughs> Everyone will start going yeah, Tuesday. <laughs> for real, for real. I know when they have I I forget what other, I think they do it once a month here. I think it's more of a local thing, but they have like old school movies. Mm-hmm. And then they also have kid movie nights where they'll play like fucking Finding Nemo and shit. Grand you know. Nemo. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that reminded me of that movie Grindhouse, like off the <laughs> off the fucking top, and that fucking movie was dope. Um, well, they were, yeah. they were they were saying that with um, the Shape of Water, it, they were like going, yeah, they go that uh, they go, uh, and somebody on um, Twitter said like, yeah, it just uh, uh, said alternative names for movies, and somebody said Grinding Nemo, and everybody's like, yeah, that's gonna stick now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I keep everyone's talking about how great that movie looks. And I keep looking at, like, trying to see what the appeal is, and I have no inclination to go see it. It's when you watch the movie and you watch it straight through, it's actually a really, really good movie. Like, uh, yeah. I'll probably see it when it comes out on Blu-ray, but uh, or when it comes table. out on, when it comes out on bootleg, <laughs> I mean Blu-ray. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, usually with movies like that, it will be my wife that will want to see it. But even she, she's like. So she has sex with a fish dude? <laughs> and she goes, like, Aquaman? I go, no, you're not lucky enough for it to be Aquaman. <laughs> she, no, she, no, it was actually more like, Aquaman? It's like, no. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, she knows Jason Momoa would be looking. <laughs> like, I want to see Jason Momoa fuck somebody. Well, let's just yeah. be real. We all do. We just <laughs> <laughs> and I'm speaking for was, the audience, too. You know, you know <laughs> in, in the first season of Game of Thrones, when he was banging um, Emily Clark, I don't know which one was arousing me more. To be completely honest with you, that just I, my head would explode. That's why I've never watched it because I just I think <laughs> yeah, about I'm that. Not ready. <laughs> I, I, I can't. I'm not physically. I'm not in shape to handle that. <laughs> in the first season, you also see a pretty hot um, servant girl teach Emily Clark how to grind on a dude. Oh, while acting that out, I had to pause it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Oh shit! Wait a minute! Let's take a deep breath." Anyway, I, I watched that several times. <laughs> Amazon finished each time. <laughs> finished each time. No, <laughs> Amazon announced on its earnings call Thursday that the price of its Amazon Prime membership will will rise for U.S. customers starting May 11, 2018. New Prime customers in the U.S. will pay $119 annually for their memberships, and Prime student customers will pay $59 annually. Exist, existing Prime and Prime student members will see their annual payments increase starting June 16th. 2018 amazon cfo brian okafsky uh made the announcement on the call on the call citing more prime features and increasing costs as the reasons for the price hike the online realtor has added a lot of new features to prime over the past few years including unlimited prime video streaming free two-hour delivery in select areas ad free twitch viewing when you link your account special deals for whole food customers and more 
The price increase comes four years after the last. Amazon raised the price of the Prime membership from seventy nine to ninety nine back in two thousand fourteen. Those who pay for Prime member Prime monthly will continue to pay twelve ninety nine per month, which comes out to about one hundred and fifty six dollars per year because they're already fucking dicking you in the ass for that. Right. Um, that price rose from ten ninety nine earlier this year as well. In a recent letter to shareholders, CFO Jeff Bezos uh, discovered that Amazon now has a hundred million Prime members. It's po- and that's when he was like, raise them prices, though. <laughs> it's possible that some existing members unhappy with the rising cost of Prime will choose not to renew their memberships. But Amazon is likely hoping that the Prime perks will continue to attract new members, those who won't know a Prime price lower than $119. Amazon also noted on its earnings call that the company's net income increased to $1.6 billion uh, for the first three months of this year, more than doubling its net income. For the same time last year. So. Fucking Lord uh, of the Rings man. I'm going to be <laughs> completely honest. I I read. I read this article. And you know no one likes price. I, I don't. I don't care one. Because yet they have added a lot of shit. Yeah. And they do provide you with a lot of shit. So I mean. And they it's have a to pay, year they, price. And they have to pay off Lord of, uh, they have to pay off Lord of the Rings somehow. I mean, they have to pay off Saruman. <laughs> um, no, the thing is, and I mean, let's no, be honest. I, no, twenty I, extra dollars a year, yeah. like whatever, what, dude. You're getting so much shit. My my thing was, is, you know, they they were saying that people were complaining because it just comes on the heels of them, you know, spending how much, like five, like almost a billion dollars for that Lord of the Rings series, and yeah. everybody, you know, of course, because people, you know, don't think. You know, they just think like, oh, yeah, it's because of Lord of the Rings. That's why everybody has to pay more. It's like that. No. When you do a TV series, you're not going to base it off of a potential, subs- you know, subscription bump. Um, and if you think that that's a lot for them, that's probably a drop in the bucket for Amazon at this particular point in time. But at the same time, they they have given so much Twitch, you know, all the acquisitions that they've that they've made are part of Prime now. You know, I, I'm going to be completely honest, and I don't want to sound like I'm dick riding or anything with Amazon because I'm I don't really use Amazon services that much. But I've looked at all the things they provide, and not not one person is going to use every single thing. Right. But I've looked at all of it, and I'm like, this company's a little generous yeah. for that 120 <laughs> a year. Like they could honestly charge two if they wanted to, right. with the amount of shit that they're giving out. Well, I mean, you look at it. I mean, with that, you get you know with with fucking prime i mean you get twitch you get um uh amazon movies you get prime mm-hmm. movies uh exclusive tv shows exclusive tv content built into there you get obviously two day shipping is really the biggest draw there that's why people get it it's because yeah. it's that biggest that two day or same day depending on where you live that same day draw also you get um you also get that um that free subscription service for audible yeah, you know they, you know where you can listen to books that are available. You for, get a free book for your Kindle your every month. Free book for your month. Kindle, yeah. You get a free book for your Kindle. You get the, uh, um, there's some other shit. There's um, there's something else I know that I, I know that. Oh well, there's um, Amazon Music, which Amazon is actually Music. Pretty, which is actually pretty decent because I've listened to it like on the. It's walk. not bad. It's not bad. Um, the unlimited allows you to play specific, like any specific song right. that you that you want. But um, when you have the the well, quote unquote, free one, the one that comes with Prime, uh, it's like, it's like Pandora. Just, it's like Spotify, not Spotify. It's like um, like Sirius XM and Pandora. Yeah, it's just it's music stations. Yeah. That's all it is. But it's dope. Yeah, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. I have that on there too. Sometimes I cue that up, even though I pay for Google. Google's <laughs> my what Google Play is the one I like because I can go. I want this song now. You know, and I type it in, it comes up, you know, but, um, I mean, their music stations are fine. Everything. Can we say that maybe, you know, Netflix got some original content's a little better, whatever, dude, like Netflix raises their prices too. Yeah. You know, they got to pay for this shit. Yeah, exactly. And, and then you also have to keep in mind too, Amazon isn't Amazon. It's been does four years. A lot, <laughs> four right. Years and since a- last Amazon year. does a lot more shit. Than Netflix does. Oh yeah, like they're putting fucking spaceships in the outer space. Like they're doing all kinds of weird shit, you know. So it's it's um, I don't know. I don't know. I saw people freaking out about it. oh, no, it's, it's like dude, it's it's a yearly cost. Yeah, like a year. Ni- if it was nineteen hundred dollars a than, month, I'd be like, what the fuck? You know, <laughs> it's still but, cheaper than than paying monthly. 
And yeah. it, was, it was funny because uh, that's why they and, and that was smart of them not. To, that was smart of them to raise the monthly price first. Yeah. Because now every it's a, it's like when they hike gas up and then bring it down, but it's not quite as low as right, it was as it was before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and yeah, because like uh, when it was going up to was it that thirteen bucks a month or whatever? Yeah. Um, People you know, were fucking sweating that yeah, shit. My my brother and I decided like you know let's go the yearly then we don't have to worry about it again. Uh, because we meant to do that, so this was just kind of the kick that we needed to kind of like yeah. make that happen. And then we did, and and you know, I told him he goes, "So means we're gonna have to pay one nineteen. I go, "Yeah, next year." And he goes, "Oh, okay." You're not even <laughs> gonna like, fuck you. Yeah. Honestly, if you if you can pay a hundred for Prime and you can't up it to one nineteen, your budget needs to be rearranged. <laughs> you like, it's you only should recon- you should bucks. reconsider even having Prime if that's the case. Right. It's if you can't afford nineteen dollars, you should be paying a hundred. You know, it's 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 just ridiculous. Work that but, extra uh, hour of overtime. Come on, right? <laughs> Get it together. <laughs> All right. So, in gaming news this week, Microsoft. Soft, Ooh. soft, soft. Ooh. Oh, by the way, this this podcast is paid for you by Amazon. No. <laughs> um, yeah, you did a lot of dick riding, but you know what? I don't care. <laughs> right. Uh, Microsoft rolled out a new Xbox One update on Tuesday that centers on better audio and visual support. The biggest addition is 1440p support for the Xbox One S and X, allowing gamers to use monitors that make the most out of the QHD 2560 by 1440 displays. It's a resolution that us- that's usually popular with PC gamers, and Microsoft is also adding AMD FreeSync support that we actually mentioned earlier last month uh, to, s- to allow compatible displays to sync f- refresh rates with Microsoft's consoles. FreeSync, like NVIDIA's G-Sync, helps remove tearing and stuttering usually associated with gaming on monitors as the refresh, uh, as the feature syncs refresh rates to ensure games run smoothly alongside the stutter freeze tech. Microsoft is also supporting automatic uh, switching to a TV's game mode. Auto low latency mode, as Microsoft calls it, will be supporting the new TV's and will automatically switch to TV in game mode to take advantage of the latency reductions. The Xbox One will also support disabled gaming mode when you switch to another app like Netflix. Microsoft is also making some audio tweaks with the April update in Xbox One. New system sounds take advantage of spatial sounds and will fully support surround sound systems when you navigate around. Gamers who listen to music while playing can also now balance game uh, audio against background music right inside the Xbox guide with uh, um, other features in this update include sharing game clips direct to Twitter, dark and light mode transitions based on sunrise slash sunset and improvements to Microsoft Edge to let you download and upload pictures, music and videos. Uh, Microsoft is rolling out the uh, rolling out the Xbox one April update. I gotta make this easier to read, uh, the <laughs> or easier to to, to say. Yeah. The software maker typically labels its Xbox One update as spring or fall, and the name change aligns with Microsoft Windows 10 April update that's expected to be available soon. My Xbox acting up too. What's going on? The disc drive's fucking up. It's the first generation Xboxes. There's a thing with them where the the disc drive starts to get weird, but I think I can just clean it. Like it will, I got, so my friend told me a thing I can do. So you, when you put the disc in, mm-hmm. hold it for a second and let it try to grab the disc, but not. So obviously it's scrubbing the, right. the thing off and then let it go in. And that worked, but it needs to install the game and it keeps failing. Like it's installed the portion that needs to be downloaded, but it is, it hasn't installed the disc. Mm-hmm. So it will let you kind of play, but it freezes a lot because mm-hmm. it keeps trying to install it. And I'm like, Ugh. oh, wow. Yeah, you know, but maybe time is, to do a trade in. That's what I'm thinking because it's um Xbox it, One X, <laughs> right? Well, what I ultimately want to do because my my wife actually was like, "Why don't you play the consoles anymore?" I'm like, "Because they're in the kids' room. Like mm-hmm. the Xbox is in uh, my boys' room and the PlayStation Four is in uh, the girls' room, which is kind of weird. Mm-hmm. Like it's like they're having a fucking gang war up here, but um." I was like, I don't really, there's not a comfortable place for you to play. And she's like, well, why don't we buy one of the new ones, like the Xbox One S or PS4 Pro, whichever one you want, and put it in the living room. And I'm like, you know what? I like your style. So, <laughs> Oh, yeah. Probably. So that's that's why I married you. <laughs> right. So probably, you know, after we get 
we, we just moved. So <laughs> it's not, we try to buy Xboxes right now. But then I'm like, which one do I want? But then I'm like, obviously the Xbox because I can plug my cable box into it and shit and get that extra extra. I don't even know what it's going to fucking do. So I just want to check that out. Oh, but, yeah, we um, were going to try that at my place to see what it did, but we never did. <laughs> yeah. Like my friend says he does it and he says it's dope. He uses it all the time. And I'm like, yeah, but what does it do? And he's like, it's just dope. And I'm like... <laughs> That's that's, that, I mean, that's not an explanation. <laughs> I mean, I like dope things, but I, you know, I think I'm gonna look it up tonight and see what it actually does, because my cable box does a lot of shit too. But it, like any cable box, it's kind of slow. Yeah. Like sometimes it gets hung up, and you know, the Xbox doesn't. Hopefully. Hmm. So, I have schedules. <laughs> I I like to post these up when they come up because I know it's really important to a lot of people. And I'm just going to run through this real quick. Basically, um, E3 is coming up, 2018. I got live streams and press conference um, uh, schedules. So you can know and when we'll you're going to watch what. And we'll most likely have a show dedicated to E3. Oh, we're covering E3 <laughs> this year. Trust me. Um, I'm just going to read through this. So below you, you'll find blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to read that part. Did you press say conference below? time. Or... Yes. Oh, you said below. below. Okay. Anytime. What? Um the following press conference announcements and rumors are already circulating. Ubisoft, the publisher of Ghost Recon, Assassin's Creed, and, and Division Games, will hold its E3 press conference on Monday, June 11th at 1 p.m. Pacific Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, 9 p.m. BST. I don't know what that is. Um, and British 6 Standard Time? <laughs> I think so. And 6 a.m., which is AEST. Argentina Eastern Time? No, I don't know. Um, Albania. I'm sure the people who the people who give a fuck know. Right. Um, Ubisoft's press conference <laughs> Albania last year. Albania standard time. <laughs> <laughs> Ubisoft's press conference last year took place at the same time. By the way, this uh, article's from IGN, of course. Um, oh, by the way, I was complaining about IGN's new um, layout, but once I got used to it, it's actually nicer. Like, if you take the time to get, because there's like a little thing on the left, we can hit comics games whatever and it kind of sorts it out mm -hmm. i'm like oh okay like once i got it it was cooler it's less of a mess which is weird for for ign uh, <laughs> ea's 2018 e3 press conference will be on saturday june 9th at 11 a.m pacific time 2 p.m eastern time setting setting it an hour earlier than last year's conference the announcement said that the ea play press conference will have big gameplay reveals Surprising announcements and more. EA already confirmed it plans to show more on the next Battlefield, Anthem, and EA Sports games. It'd be nice to see what the fuck's going on with Anthem. Um, fans can also attend EA Play, EA's E3 public event in Hollywood from June 9th to June 11th. Uh, register for EA Play here and, of course, show notes link. You know what's up. <laughs> Bethesda was the first company to announce their 2018 E3 conference. The B the BE3 showcase will be on Sunday, June 10th at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And fans will once again have the opportunity to register for the event. Microsoft, according to a leak, Microsoft's conference will remain on Sunday, uh, moved up by an hour over last year's time slot. If true, this would place Microsoft's 2018 E3 press conference on Sunday, June 10th. At 1 p.m. Pacific Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, Nintendo is streaming its E3 pre presentation on June 12th at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, 12 p.m. Eastern Time. Presentation will take a look at upcoming Nintendo Switch titles for 2018, including the recently announced Super Smash Bros. game. The announcement did, didn't include any mention of Nintendo Nintendo's mobile games or 3DS. Sony has not revealed the time for their E3 PlayStation conference. Um... Now, if you go to this link, it will show you everywhere you can watch this. Now, if you're going to E3, first of all, go fuck yourself because I'm not going. Uh, <laughs> no, if you're going to E3, then great. You can go fucking see it while you're there. But for the rest of us, for the layman, there's places that you can watch this streaming, um, which is, you know, I don't I think it's free. 
Yeah, I don't. It's, it's free. Yeah, they don't. They don't charge for E3. YouTube. I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about um, <laughs> BlizzCon. Blizzard, BlizzCon. Yeah, BlizzCon charges um, you just to look at their website. I mean, it's like <laughs> fuck out of here with it. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm gonna run through the, real quick all of all the things that you can watch it on. Um, desktop computer, phone or tablet. Twitter's E3 Live, um, stream IGN's iOS app, IGN's Android app, all of IGN's fucking apps. Um, for everything, Xbox, Roku, fucking Kindle Fire, YouTube, IGN got it. Like that's the main like IGN's Pluto TV channel. I don't even know what the fuck that is. <laughs> like, wait a minute, IGN's got a TV channel? What the fuck? Um, yeah, I think it's on like Roku or something. <laughs> let me click that link. Um, IGN spoken audio only news editions. <laughs> fuck. And various cable TV channels. So. Um, Definitely, I want to watch all these press conferences this year because I'm gonna be I'm gonna be completely honest. Last year, I wasn't a hundred percent dedicated to the cause as I should have been. I watched the press conferences I should have only because of the show, but only because of the show. This year, I want to watch them. You understand? <laughs> and there's a lot of interesting stuff going on. Like, like everybody's doing like, some weird shit. Like we were talking, like when we said when you're gonna watch, and we were talking about how going to the movies and Adam doesn't like you know noise and shit like that. He goes, I just sit there facing front and his eyes darting back and forth like reading code. Or like that's gonna be him doing E3. Right. He's just sitting there staring at the computer, his eyes racing back and forth. I have like six monitors up, just watching it all. But um, and you're gonna have you're gonna have all all different channels up, and they're all showing the same shit. But this is pretty dope. It, I guess it doesn't matter if it's on. Um, oh yeah, IGN's fucking channel. I'm on it right now. What the fuck is this shit? I'm gonna have to look it. <laughs> I don't know what Pluto TV is, but I'm looking at something right now that has. Hold on, Geek and Gaming section, the feed, Hive, Anime All Day, Minecraft TV, IGN, CNET, Geek and Sundry, and Nerdist, and it looks like fucking television station. I guess I know what I'm talking about next podcast. Stay <laughs> fucking tuned. <laughs> Just bookmark that and move on with my life. Uh, all right. So. Oh, um, my God. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Moving on into comic. Three iconic DC comic storylines are making the jump to another medium. The novelization of Batman the Killing Joke, Batman the Court of Owls, and Harley Quinn Mad Love. Entertainment Ooh. Weekly reported that three titles will arrive in stores beginning this fall from Titan Books with new covers that you can see on the um, on the link. And I like the way those covers look. They look pretty sweet. The rollout begins September 25th with the adaptation of Alan Moore and Brian Boland's influential 1988 one-shot The Killing Joke from Krista Faust and Gary Phillips. The story not only provides an origin for the Joker while drawing comparisons and contrast between Batman and his arch nemesis and the depiction of shooting and paralyze the um, paralysis of Barbara Gordon. Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo's 2011-12 arc, The Court of the Owls, already influenced Rocksteady's Batman Arkham Knight and the animated Batman vs. Robin, but now its tale of the secret society that exists in Gotham for centuries will receive the novelization by Greg Cox on November 13th. Finally, Mad Love will adapt Paul Dini and Bruce Timm's 1994 one-shot that details mm. how Dr. Harlan Quinzel fell in love with the villainous Joker, representing one of the two most twisted relationships the, in the industry. Dini and Tim brought Quinn to life in Batman the Animated Series and gave her a very own comic book backstory. This time, it's Dini and Hugo writing author... Uh, Pat, uh, Pat Cadigan, who tell the tale in the novel, released February 12, 2019, just in time for Valentine's Day. <laughs> of course. Of course. I'm really, I'm actually really interested. In Me this. too. I'm actually really kind of like, oh, this is kind of cool. First of all, these are three great stories to right. do this with. The Killing Joke, I don't even need to fucking explain it. Like, if I do, you're listening to the wrong fucking podcast. <laughs> uh, Mad Love is actually a really good story. Court of the um, Owls. Court of the Owls is one that I actually kind of missed out on on the comics. I didn't really read it as much. Yeah, so the, I'm uh, interested in that. Yeah, I got the trade of that one. Yeah, and, um, and I heard it was super it's, dope, it too. It is. It's like – and it was like – I thought it was great because that was like I think Snyder's real introduction taking over Batman. Yeah. Um, and I was like, going, oh, I love this guy. <laughs> no homo, Don't, but y'all. actually – No, it is. full fucking full, homo. Yeah, exactly. I would blow the shit out of Snyder. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, yeah, the uh, 
I'm really interested. I, I read about this yesterday. And I was actually going to pick it for my story, but I saw that Steve already took care of it because Steve's a G. Of course, he already <laughs> took care of it. Um, I actually on CBR, I'm looking at some a Bendis interview. <laughs> Let me just uh, look away. Um, but yeah, that's pretty fucking dope. Oh, I got my windows all mixed up. Okay, my turn. <laughs> Itches. Um, the long-awaited Flash War storyline is set to debut in a few weeks in the pages of the Flash, and it's carrying ramifications teased by DC creators to have long-lasting impact on the DC universe. Writers Joshua Williamson and Tom King have said as much, and now there are new tweets from the pair that have fans wondering about what will happen when Barry Allen, Flash, and Wally West, other Flash, are at odds with each other. And let me just zoom in real quick, because I'm getting old. Um, (laughs) Ever since it was announced in 2017. Did you just get glasses, too? I did, but my monitor's like, it's too far away. I need to set up my desk right. Um, every, ever it's since actually it was, somebody else's monitor across the way. I'm actually at the <laughs> library. I'm not. <laughs> ever since it was announced in 2017, New York Comic Con, Flash War has been on the mind of DC Faithful for months, and now we have a few more pieces of the puzzle. Tom King sent out a tweet recently hyping up the storyline and touts himself as very knowledgeable on the subject for obvious <laughs> reasons. Take a look. It's Tom King's tweet says, I've read the first issue and I've been hearing Josh talk about this and plan for this for years. Flash War is not to be missed. Also, super secret, what happens here will have huge re- repercussions for the DCU. I know because I'm writing those repercussions. Shh, is what he says. <laughs> so that's from the um, horse's mouth there, but... As you can see, King knows because he has to incorporate what? As you can see, King knows because he has to incorporated the events. Okay, <laughs> from Flash War into his own upcoming writing. Proofread. <laughs> right. If that's not enough, uh, writer Josh Williamson tweeted his own preview by revealing the cover of Flash number forty-nine, drawn by Howard Porter with color by Hi-Fi. And first of all, follow the link in the show notes because this cover though is gorgeous like it's just got it's one of those like the whole justice league like it's just super dope so you've got a couple of the bat family in there just chilling out um oh damn yeah isn't it dope that is so dope got nightwing in the back <laughs> you already know you fucking hiding there's a couple who's a green dude all the way in the back yeah i know i see that i'm like who the fuck is that dude <laughs> I have to research later. Um, by the look of the cover, it seems as though the fight between Barry Allen and Wally West has the attention of the heavy hitters in the DC universe. But why the Justice League would be involved is unknown at this point. Flash War has been hinted. It's their civil war. Ooh, has been hinted at in recent months, ever since Wally West regained memories that were once lost to him during the events of Flash, the Flash from number 45. The repercussions of these long, long lost memories could lead West to take to take a very drastic course of action um yeah so this is interesting well l- look i'm not surprised that everyone's involved because when there's something heavy going on with flash can change a lot of shit yeah. i mean we, are, we all read flashpoint right? right you know i mean he can he can really he has he's one of the most powerful fucking superheroes in the dcu and i don't think he gets enough credit for it like, like everyone's like, oh, he's the fast one, right? It's like, no, he's the bending reality one. Right. He's, he's, you know, that, he's like, that guy. <laughs> right. Um, he's just a nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, but um, I'm really interested in Flash War. Um, I'm happy they had a little write up on it. And that cover has me fucking hyped. That dude. cover is pretty fucking badass. Super dope. What is, what's Cyborg doing? Look, look, fucking look like he tripped. He's like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it was kind of like, oh, but, 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 <laughs> Bitch. Let me see if I can get a little zoom in of this. <laughs> He's sitting there going, "Who, uh, who warrioured me? Who warrioured me? <laughs> You're fucked up. <laughs> who threw that goddamn banana peel? <laughs> 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 Fucking Kong, you cheese." <laughs> As it should be, our uh, entire comic segment was DC. You're right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, and in technology news this week. Uh, get your tablets and smartphones charged. A gigabit gigabit network is coming to Southern California. 
Spe- yeah. <laughs> Spectrum is the latest cable and internet company to join the region's high we uh, high weed uh, high speed high. You okay over there with that legalization, bro? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> It's for medicinal purposes. <laughs> right. <laughs> On Wednesday, April twenty fifth, the company said it will it's launch it will it is launching Gigabit from Ventura to San Diego to and east to Palm Springs. All cities in the region will have access to Spectrum's network by years and a representative said. The company is owned by Charter Communications, which bought Time Warner in two thousand sixteen. The net uh, the high speed network, one gigabit or one thousand megabits downloadable per second is at least 10 times faster than the most broadband connections of 100 megabits per second. It's especially useful in households that have many Wi-Fi connected devices, streaming shows, games, and movies all at the same time. The mm-hmm. premium service will cost a tidy amount. The net, the new new customers will pay $104.99 monthly for the gigabit service, while existing subscribers will pay $114.99. In a statement, the company said it will continue to provide network services with no modem spe- no modem fees or data caps. Cable television is a separate fee. Providers nationwide have been growing gigabit access as consumers demand for more bandwidth at home. In Southern California, AT&T and Google Fiber offer a gigabit service in limited cities. Google Fiber landed last uh, landed last fall at nine Irvine comp- um, County apartment communities. Google Fiber subscribers in November were paying either $70 per month for a gigabit service or 50 for a 100 megabit service. Uh, high-speed internet, uh, or yeah, highspeedinternet.com ranks internet access nationwide uh, at said California ranks 12th as the most connected state. Nearly all Californians, or 98%, have access to broadband internet, the state, uh, the state says. Spectrum said it's giganet, uh, gigabit service. Giganet? I know. Giganet? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the hell's happening. Maybe I have a stroke somewhere. Or, uh, need to have need to be installed professionally to avoid any issues for uh, for customers. The company said. So, uh, <laughs> you know, we'll be getting by year's end. Listen, I um, I'm not trying to flex. All right. <laughs> But Arizona has gigabit uh, with Cox Communications, and I'm I'm gonna tell you like this: changed my fucking life. Like nothing. I could, I even tested it one day. I got everything with a screen streaming YouTube or Netflix or something. Not one of them was buffering. Right. Like it's it's intense, dude. Like I'm having um. Unfortunately, right now I have some issues with an outlet in my house, so I had to put. I have to be on Wi-Fi on my desktop. I'm recording this whole thing on fucking Wi-Fi. It's perfect. Yeah, I wouldn't have noticed the difference. You know what I mean? So it's like the download speeds wired are like 400 and no, 600 and something down, and like 400 and something up. It's stupid. Like it, you, there's you don't need it. <laughs> like it's, that's how fast it is. And on Wi-Fi, it's 60. It's like sixty six down and fifty something up, like fuck. Dude. I'm go- I, and listen. I'm going from like point thirty nine <laughs> down or no up and fucking three down. You know, so it, it changed my fucking life. But yeah, man, you're gonna love that shit when it rolls through. Yeah, I know because I was I saw that and I was like, oh no, shit, no data caps too. No data caps. There you go. Yeah, cause... I do have I do have a data cap, but it's stupid high. I can't remember what it is. Like you'd have to be bootlegging game of thrones all month (laughs) you know what i mean like it's it's just it's it's a stupid cap i I think it was like fucking 50 terabytes just stupid (laughs) shit i was like what yeah because on average for me i'm only doing like 100 to 200 gigs when i first got because on um spectrum you can actually go and see your data usage yeah and uh what last no it was a couple years ago when we first got the playstation 4 and the xbox one oh man i like my downloads like he jumped but that was because i was downloading all these games and shit you know yeah. for the xbox and stuff do what you gotta do yeah bro. you know <laughs> but uh but yeah it's like you know um it, it'll be nice because especially here for like you know me doing the show and then my brother if he wants to like you know watch some youtube disaster video you know, on his TV and shit like that, it's like nothing. Like now, you know, he can do it, but it's just for audio quality. It kind of stays off of it. But to get that gigabit, he can fucking have all the TV streaming <laughs> at yeah, the man. same time and no, not not notice shit. So, and right now, I'm only, I'm paying eighty bucks, 
you know, for what I got, which is the highest one that they have. So it's like 35 bucks extra. So for a gigabit, that's not much. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, it's it's worth it too. Like, I, I think I pay like, well, I have a bundle, obviously, but the the internet's the biggest part of the bundle, mm-hmm. and it's um, I want to say like ninety bucks mm-hmm. for just internet, and it's it's worth every fucking penny. Like it's it's just everything just fucking works. I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> you know, it's it's nice to not hear. The internet's not working. <laughs> uh, right. Fucking every five seconds. Because you have the thing. I have a house of eight people. Right. That's eight handheld devices. That's four TVs. Um, currently one computer. But there's two laptops as well. Like, there's just tons of shit well, that can also, be on at any given well, time. Well, also for you now, I mean, you, you're not streaming everything like you were before. Right. now you have the TV. And it's just TV in the living room, right? You don't have TV in any of the rooms, right? No, I haven't. I don't know if I want to put it in the other rooms yet. Mm. They're just streaming up here, but I might, I might actually, cause it's like 15 extra bucks a month. That's not bad. Which isn't bad, but I might get it at least in my room. Cause I'm kind of like, I want to watch the fucking ball game, man. Yeah. My wife hogs that fucking television. <laughs> You know, so I'm like, because I don't. Yo, bitch, house ain't gonna clean itself. <laughs> <laughs> my wife loves my wife loves movies. She loves TV, and not in an obsessive like. Not I'm as much as somebody lo- Not as much as somebody that loves Black Knight. <laughs> <laughs> All day. Um, but she's not like sitting. In, I'm not trying to make it out like she sits on the couch all day, fucking eating bonbons. But that's that is how she unwinds. I unwind other ways. Like I'll read a book or. <laughs> play a game or something <laughs> masturbate no, i'm masturbating right now no um <laughs> but <laughs> to the sound of my own voice <laughs> so and, and she's one of those people that like she's not even watching tv but i can't change it because she's listening to it oh god like uh well, my dad that, used to pull that shit when i was a kid the dodger game would be on and it's like you know as younger i was like i didn't want to watch the dodger game my dad would be asleep on the couch and i just barely pick up the remote and i'd hear his eyes are still closed i'm watching this and I'm like, your eyes are closed. <laughs> yeah, but baseball is understandable. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> but um, no, the uh, and and we have the I I got I added the Spanish package, so it tons of Spanish channels, like legit Spanish channels that you would get if you were in Mexico, like you get <laughs> Universal Spanish, like right. stuff like that. And uh, we were watching. <laughs> this is a funny story, real quick. It was the Spanish um, Billboard Awards. And she's watching. I sat down, whatever. I know who these groups are and stuff because she <laughs> listens to that music. And um, so Daddy Yankee's out and he's doing a little set. You know, they got a little um, – it was cool too. The whole back looked like um, Space Invaders. Nah. Like, it was really dope looking. And then this chick um, who's a singer comes out. Uh, her name's Becky G. And she's in thigh highs, um, straps, and a corset. And I about lost my fucking mind. I was like <laughs> – I, and I had been hanging out with um, my friends too much because I've been doing a lot of work, like overtime and stuff. So I got a little too comfortable. I'm sitting on the couch. This chick comes out and I go, God damn. <laughs> and my wife's like, for real? And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, what you should have done is looked her straight in the eye and go, yeah. <laughs> yeah, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> but, you, but you said bitch, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was scared for my life. Yeah. So, I think um, you would be. <laughs> moving right along. First YouTube and then Pornhub. Now it's Snapchat. In its guest quest, not guest, in its quest to turn a profit, Snapchat parent company Snap Inc. Um, is looking for more ways to generate revenue while preventing users from defecting to other platforms. You know, like Instagram, which is wildly better than snapchat just saying (laughs) Um, but snapchat users may have to endure more ads in the process and soon these ads will be ones that can't be skipped snapchat will start testing a a six second ad aptly called commercials (laughs) digiday report reported well i don't know why i think that's funny (laughs) uh digiday reported wednesday you know because originality thank you steve (laughs) steve wrote this by the way um (laughs) The test scheduled to start in the middle of next month, which the company confirmed, will appear in some shows. Fortun- fortunately, not in in personal stories or the Discover News section. I didn't even know they had all that. I thought it was just fucking people sending dick pics to people. No, it's um, it's 
since they've changed it, they made it harder to do that, but to watch all their other shit. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, people Not from personal with... experience or anything, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I heard from a friend. Right. <laughs> Uh, people familiar with the test told the publication that the move is an attempt to show how many ads users will tolerate. Personally, when I am watching a well, when Steve is watching a video in Facebook and an ad comes on, I'm no longer watch the video. Real talk. <laughs> Commercials is expected to to consist of high quality ads from major companies, presumably with a hefty price tag attached. But it's been a rocky year for Snap as it weathered several backlash severe backlash for, for its recent Snapchat redesign, uh, disavowals from well-known celebrity influencers, and multiple rounds of layoffs. The company may soon have to add a general distaste for mandatory advertisements to that list, depending on how it designs and rolls out its commercials platform. While Instagram has incorporated much of the features Snapchat started with, Instagram has remained the way it was launched. Snapchat is simply a whole new mess. I mean, commercials are weird. Like, I understand they have to make money, and I agree they should have ads, but I don't want to watch them either. Right. You know what I mean? It's like a weird thing because I could go to Snapchat and have to wa watch these six-second ads, or I could just go to Instagram and not. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really – it's one of those things where you're kind of in that little bit of a bubble. Like – and it's weird too because like when you go – like youtube or or pornhub or any of those things and you see that at it's tolerated because it's a video platform right you know, you're kind of like all right you know you just kind of and most of the times they're not like you know how sometimes you watch commercials on tv and it's like a full two minute commercial but it's held like an infomercial kind of thing and you're just like what the fuck is this um but you have like a five second ad ten second ad or whatever but on something like Snapchat, it just doesn't seem like it's necessary. You know, it's yeah. like you have other apps that have ads in there or I mean, you even have you kind of have ads, but they're still ads on Instagram, you know, like oh, sponsored, you know, this. And it's kind of like you can still, you know, it's in your feed. It's like, you know, Facebook, you can kind of skim it. But anytime like Facebook, you know, when you then somebody has a video and you're watching the video and then like the video stops and it's like the um, it'll continue in five seconds. Like, I don't, you know, it's like that ruins the customer interface. It's a real quick well, way to there's get. There's another thing. There, there's a thing that I've noticed too, and YouTube does it. So I, I've done this. I use an ad blocker. Mm -hmm. But for people on YouTube that I watch consistently, I turn it off when I'm on their page. I'm like, all right, they're trying to make a little money. You know, whatever. I can deal with one or two fucking commercials on YouTube. It's not going to kill me. Now I have YouTube bread, so it doesn't really matter. But um, <laughs> the. I noticed something that that you kind of take for granted from sitcom television is the fade in and the fade out right. or an appropriate time to have a commercial, you know, <laughs> where it's like it's like it's not just in the middle of a sentence and it cuts off. Yeah. And then you're, it's, then you're like, what the fuck? You know, it it fucks you up. I've noticed I, that, I noticed that when you, if you watch British television mm. on American TV, oh, it yeah. does that because they don't have commercials like we do. Yeah. Hulu does the same thing. Like, yeah, it, it's it's weird because what was I watching? There was something on IFC and I'm trying to remember what movie it was, but it was a movie. I was like, oh, this is on. And I didn't look to see IFC was the channel, which is um, independent film channel, which doesn't show independent films. But anyway, mm. I um, I forgot that it was I didn't notice it was IFC, which means it has commercials. So I was watching and then all of a sudden it was like, and I go, oh, cool, the scene. And then the guy picks up a phone and it's just about to start a tense scene and then awkwardly cuts to a commercial. And I'm like, what? What the hell? But even Hulu, when you go to Hulu and you're watching television, which already has the commercial breaks, sometimes Hulu will cut just before it's actually meant to cut. For yeah. the commercial, and then when it comes back, it picks up right where it awkwardly cut, and then fades out, and then fades back in, and you're like, "What?" <laughs> like, it it that's that, it just makes it awkward, and it pulls you out of it enough yeah. where you're like, oh, "I don't I don't know what's going on." Yeah, you know, and you're kind of like, "Whatever." Then I'm just kind of like, "I'll just wait for it to come on Netflix, and I'll just watch it there because then I can at least mm -hmm. watch watch it unimpeded." But yep. yeah, it's it's weird how they do that, and yeah, sometimes I'll. Um, especially if it's something like I did, what was it? The halftime show for NF, the NF, um, Super Bowl halftime show. And I was watching the halftime show. It's like a half hour. 
and you do the commercial in the beginning and then you watch it and this is on YouTube and it went for about mm, 10, 15 minutes and then awkwardly cut to a commercial and then cut right back in. I think it had like two commercial breaks within there. So I was like, going, oh, that's annoying. Like if you're going to do it, you know, pack it in the beginning, you know, but don't because it, it really does take you out of the experience of watching. And then you're like, oh, it has commercials and you'll just cut and look for a video that doesn't have the commercials. <laughs> so it's just yeah. it's just a bit weird. Internet. And I think that's another thing, too, is that with television, commercials are the same everywhere. Right. So you kind of know what to expect, but on the internet they're different. Like it's a pop up, or it's interrupting your show. It's like you're just like leave me the fuck alone. Yeah. Like I I don't want I don't care, you know. And it's it's um I noticed too commercials on TV are better. Like it's it's almost like you have commercials that play on primetime, and some of them are funny, or it's about shit you're you think is dope, like new movies coming out or whatever. And then you have the commercials that play it like. 1 p.m. on a Thursday when you had to call out and you're kind of sick. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Um, and those commercials are useless. You yeah. know, that it's that's the internet commercials. They're right. just dumb. You don't give a fuck. <laughs> Moving on right. to our main shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And that with that no- on that note, that brings us to the end of the headlines. So our topic this week uh, could probably be a very quick topic. Um, actually, it, it started off as being a, a, a thing about Infinity War and the, the 10 years of Marvel. That Marvel took what was called, you know, what a lot of people call second tier, third tier heroes and turned it into a, basically a, a fucking cinematic universe, um, which Infinity War opened this week. And I've seen it fucking amazing it blew my mind i it's just one of those where i'm still trying to figure out a lot of stuff and wrap my head around the whole thing that's why i haven't written the review yet because i'm still trying to figure everything out and yeah. actually articulate what I, um that roller coaster of feelings that you have in there but there's a lot of gifts out there that kind of especially one on there that said the that was a gif that was um how the theater felt when thor um, on thor's entrance and it's just it was hilarious so i retweeted on the lazy geeks um, Twitter feed, but you know, Adam and I started talking about you know, ten pole movies and and the reviews of comic movies, um, and um, and and then there was a comment made by uh, 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 James Cameron who said that you know, by the time the you know Avatar movies come out. He's hoping for a a fatigue in Avengers type of movies, um, and judging by the the attendance of and um, ticket sales of both Black Panther and Infinity War, yeah, I don't think that's coming. Um, and also, Cameron, uh, don't think that just because people will get tired of of comic book movies, they're going to go see Avatar eighteen twenty four and sixteen. It's just no, it's not, not going to happen. Right. It's it's really funny that he wants there to be a fatigue. When he wants to make fucking twenty seven avatars, and he's made th- um, he's made two Terminators and another one that's coming out. You know, it's like, really, are you the guy that really should be saying that? <laughs> You're doing the same shit. <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, my thing, uh, but we kind of um, it kind of evolved into a conversation about tentpole movies, about just that the, it seems that as of late, you know, theaters are just filled with big budget franchises and you know it, marvel's thing kind of brought up a little bit of an interesting thing because when you look at any any theater and you look at the movies list, you'll see you know it's almost like it's almost surprising that there's another movie's playing in a theater you know because you have like at the the local theater by my place you have imax 3d this is all in the same theater you have a regular um digital you have IMAX 3D. You have 3D digital. You have mm-hmm. um, Dolby Experience Atmos. You know, um, you know, feel around. You know, you have all of this, like <laughs> <laughs> all of this, all of this. And then you're like, going, oh, but they are managing to show, you know, a couple of other movies that are that are, you know, that are out. 
that no one fucking cares about. <laughs> Which what is... movies even released this weekend? Oh yeah. Good. With fu- let me let me check it out. Movie I releases. Should, I should just this. go to the website and just look at last week's releases. Um, but but the one thing that and this has kind of been something that I've kind of been thinking about because uh, uh, one of the other podcasts I do, uh, Patrick and I just finished our uh, movies of 1977. And we were looking for, we were looking at a lot of the movies and we were like going, you know, a lot of these movies were small, but they took chances. They did things that were different. And, you know, and at the time, you know, uh, and this was something we were doing on our research at the time, movie attendance was at an all time low. So people were allowed to make, you know, experiment and try new things and see what happened. And, right. and you know, nowadays you can't do that because you know if a st- the movies aren't given the enough time to cultivate out there you know to actually bring in an audience they're in there if they don't make you know 50 million dollars in its opening weekend you don't see them again in the theater and and that's not to say that i don't like the marvel movies i mean jesus christ i go to the marvel movies i go to the star wars movies the dc movies I go to those tentpole movies but there is something to say about smaller movies you know and that we can't lose sight of those movies and there, there has to be an avenue for those movies, which in part, you know, you're kind of thinking, okay, thank God for like Netflix and, and, um, and Amazon that are doing those smaller films. Um, the guy recently just saw this movie, uh, the last movie star, which had Burt Reynolds and Ariel winter. And it was about a fading, you know, movie star coming to the twilight of his life. Great movie. Really, really great movie. Um, it really kind of makes you, reminds you of just how great of an actor Burt Reynolds really is. And Ariel Winter, if you guys don't know who that name is, she's the, um, the middle daughter on um, Modern Family. And she did an amazing job, especially opposite him, because yeah. it's pretty much them the entire movie. And um, really great movie, really got a small release, you know, but everybody that's been watching it and has been having really positive things to say directed by adam rifkin he directed um the chase back in the 90s um but you know it's just like movies like those and and i understand kind of the idea about you know super i think superhero fatigue but the thing is is i think it's because those movies generally are the bigger budget you know the bigger straws i just say tentpole movies because the fast and the furious movies you know you had you know, the Harry Potter movies, you mm-hmm. know, the Star Wars movies. And- I honestly think we're going to move to a time where the only movies that are going to come out in the movie theater are tentpole movies. And the smaller movies will will go to Netflix and Hulu and stuff like that. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know, but it's it, like, like, for instance, what opened on this weekend? Uh, four movies with Avengers. Disobedience, Kings, Let the Sunshine In. And the test and the art of thinking. All of these look like indie flicks. Okay, first of all, disobedience. Um, Rachel Weiss and uh, Rachel yes, McAdams. Yes, I understand. I, yeah, I'm I'm going to be seeing that. Like I need to see it as well. But I'm just saying. <laughs> but I, I saying, might and, see and it and at not, home in the dark. You know, <laughs> the door locked. I'm not saying that any of these movies are bad movies. They could be all be wonderful fucking flicks. But no one is noticing them. Because the Avengers Infinity Wars is out at the same fucking weekend and and the amount of hype and excitement for that movie and well justified swallows up the fucking air in the room and these other movies can't get any attention. So I really think that having it on an outlet, a streaming outlet like Netflix or 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 like even and hey marvel does it too they have some stories they want to tell that are kind of smaller stories like the jessica jones and luke cage and stuff they have that outlet there you know and i think that's fucking cool but there's an adjustment period and i think we're starting to see the end of it because the only movies people see are these big ass movies we keep seeing movies where we go oh that movie looks dope and it fucking bombs like no one sees it like there's a lot of movies that I think are fun. A lot of com- like comedies, pure comedies, are not making it in the theater lately. Like unless it has a comic book character in it, you know, or rom coms, like stuff like that. Like it's not. It's they might do decent, but they're not pulling fucking numbers like these comic book movies are. Well, yeah, and but you know when you, I mean the only and in in straight out comedies, unless they're like 
kind of raunchy or kind of comedies like that the they they could tend to work you know um that yeah, r rated shit yeah blockers seems to be doing really well with mm -hmm. you know which i still want to see but um you know it, and and rom-coms are always been made on the cheap so they don't really have to do a lot because you always need a date movie <laughs> you know you know because you know you gotta you gotta have that movie where that chick gets kind of okay maybe i'll you know and then you know then then you have a happy ending after the movie but oh. you know, <laughs> uh but yeah you know i think in some instances you know we a lot of these big movie chains regal amc you know um pacific a lot of those types of theater chains swallow up the small the small little what would usually be considered indie movie houses you know the ones that always have the like the disobedience and 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 those that come out they have a chance to kind of run them for a while you know maybe they have one big draw you know and um but you know we used to have a, a lemley's over here at fallbrook and they were always complaining that they had trouble from amc that amc always tried to block them out because they consider them competition I'm like, it was a lemley's i mean jesus the most high profile movie they showed was like capote or something you know it's like they're they're yeah. not a threat to them but they ended up squeezing them out and then bought them and then put up another amc right there yeah and you know? now that outlet and and that is a think about it from this this respect too is is steve saying this in los angeles <laughs> los angeles is where you can actually see indie flicks fairly easily like in in little little theaters and stuff like that in places like arizona where i am there is no place to see them right we used to have a theater that did and it closed because no one went there you know so it's and and i'm not saying look capitalism is capitalism right. if no one's going there it's going to close right. but there needs to be an outlet for that kind of film or things are going to get really fucking stale yeah. it's it's just going to be the same shit over and over again you know and yeah marvel's killing it there's nothing wrong with what they're doing and i think comic books is such a a varied storytelling medium that you can keep people enthralled for pretty fucking long yeah and then but, with, the, with the stable of characters that they have you know, it can it can go, but the thing is, is that the only time they're going to stop doing it is if people stop going to see it. And everybody's th that's the big thing right now. Well, that and it should be they're fucking dope. Yeah, and I mean, but you also have the people that watch the Fast and Furious movies. You know, yeah. everybody always goes, "Fuck, how many of them do they have to make?" Which well, is essentially a comic book movie anyway. Yeah, which which is funny because they said, uh, "I heard that Netflix they're going to get a cartoon, a Netflix cartoon," and I'm like, "Wasn't it always?" Yeah. Right. it's still a cart it's, it's been a cartoon been a, since the beginning yeah it's been a cartoon since the fast and the furious let's, let's, let's be honest there and the fast and the furious has a formula that works yeah. it's stupidly fast cars outrageous action scenes and hot ass fucking women like it, <laughs> I, i'll watch it if it comes on you know the movies are dumb but i'll watch it if it comes on. <laughs> but, and hot and, and good looking dudes too you know for the but, girls like them. <laughs> but that's the thing it's just like you know and I, I think some of the problem is is that you know we have we have this generation of writers and 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 you know well I don't want to say writers I want to say more uh, uh, what do you call it uh, opinions where it's like you know that's this is all they've known right big budget you know these since you know the early aughts you know it's like that's all they've known has been these kind of movies so it's like. They don't really understand that, you know, hey, if you go a little further back than that, we had smaller movies. The tentpole movies were just relegated to, and I think that's a big thing too, is that tentpole movies were relegated to the summer because you would never be able to see Star Wars in December. You right. know, it was always at it all. It wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, it would all be, it would all be in the summer. And then once you got into the holidays, you'd have a couple of holiday movies and then you'd have all the Oscar movies that come out. And then the movies wouldn't start get interesting again until uh, uh, until like April May, because even like Deadpool, you De if Deadpool any movie that used to come out in February was always considered it was the studios take out the trash day, because any movie that came up in February were movies that were supposed to come out in summer or fall didn't turn out the way they want so they just kind of shoveled them out right. in February or a you might get a couple random rom coms in there too yeah. Yeah, for Valentine's but Day. And for stuff Valentine's like that. Day, but nothing too big. Yeah, so when Deadpool came out in a February, everybody's like, "What?" 
And then it turned into a huge hit. Now you have big budget movies that come out all year long. And I think that that kind of in, that kind of I think attacks it too because it's like suddenly summer's not just where all the summer because they're like I think Patrick and I were talking about how we used to summer always used to be okay this week is this one next week is this one next yeah, week is that one I remember that yeah and now it's like okay we got this and now we've got three weeks till this comes out and then another three weeks and then this comes out and then it's like okay what happened and then you know and and then it would be like the end of August there'd be nothing that comes out. You know, once school started and stuff like that. But now you have them coming out all the time. I mean, Thor fucking came out right r- just before Thanksgiving. Like, what the hell? You know, no, you would never have a Thor movie come out just before Thanksgiving. So, you know, I, I think that's part of it, too. I think it's because distribution has kind of become an all year thing as opposed to why are we limited in ourselves to summer? Right. You know, but yeah, it's, it's it's just and that's that again is the smaller films get kind of snuffed out yeah. and because there's so many fucking comic book, like I feel like one comes out every month now. I know I'm being dramatic, but it, it kind of feels that way. No, it does. You know, I mean, and it, it's like, and I'm not complaining. I mean, I, I like the genre, <laughs> you know, but it, it must suck for people who don't, you know what I mean? Like people who like the indie flicks or the fucking, the weird movies that, that most people don't really get into. Is those movies are fucking getting snuffed out left and right like it's a fucking murder scene, dude. Like, <laughs> it's like a true crime. It's like a true crime, <laughs> right? But the thing, like, oh, we put this uh, indie film in the in the theater. It's like, yeah, it came out yesterday. Where is it? Where is it? It's like, I don't know. Someone made a mistake because that was supposed to be the 18th theater where the Avengers was playing. <laughs> you right. know, and that's the thing. Like, you know, I look at it, and and for me, it's like, you know, and like what Adam's saying. You know, it's kind of where I am. I I I have that gamut. I think Patrick, Patrick and I, that's, I think what makes us good movie friends and Peter is because we have kind of that wide net. We like the comic book movies. We like those big, you know, tentpole movies. And at the same time, we do like the indie flicks. If, if Patrick or myself or Peter find one, we're like, Hey, did you see this movie? Actually, it's a really good movie. You find you're like, Oh shit, that was really good. You know, because maybe it, it flew under the radar and you didn't see that one commercial that they spent all their money to put out and you happen to not be watching TV or you had your back to it, you know, at the time. But, you know, it, it, and, you know, so we have that game, but there's a lot of people that, you know, like, I don't watch, like, oh, God, those people, I don't watch TV because there's nothing good on TV. Really? Really? There's nothing good on TV? Like, there's nothing out there? That hey, I don't you- really watch TV, asshole. No, I, it's like people that sit there and say, I don't watch TV because there's nothing good on. Oh. I don't, you know, it's like, I don't own a TV because it's just all garbage. It's like, Really? You can't find one simple thing, <laughs> you know, that would that actually would kind of keep you know pique your interest. But it's like you know, I, oh God, there's this one guy I used to work with. He said like I don't watch movies, and I looked at him, and this one this woman that I used to work with, she's like fifties, like late fifties. She turned around and goes, "What do you mean you don't watch movies?" He goes, "I can't." He goes, two, two hours is too much time to devote to one thing." So he has like the world's smallest attention span. <laughs> but he watches but he watches like reality TV. Yeah, so he just he's just not he wants to watch trash. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he wants to watch. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, and I was like, what do you mean two hours? It's like it's like Give me a break. Like oh and it was But like, that's kind of telling too because reality TV, you it's attention grabbing at every second. It's short attention like, span theater. Right. Yeah. It's it, there's always something new going on. You know, so it's it, that kind of makes sense. I know someone at work who says she doesn't like to watch anything that's fantasy or sci-fi. She only likes to watch things that could happen. And I go, mm, OK, you know, well, then whatever. Not, then I guess it's not escapism because some people watch that shit for escapism. Yeah. Which is, you know, what I do. I watch the I news just, for I just, escapism. I don't know. Like <laughs> the 21st century confused. Me. I just watch good movies. Like if I dig it, I dig it. Like I don't know why I watch them. I don't know if it's for escapism or it's touching my inner child or I have no fucking idea. Hmm. I just watch a movie if I enjoy a fucking movie and I watch some pretty shit movies like uh, Steve name <laughs> dropped Knight. a moment ago. <laughs> I was watching black Knight. I'm a fucking gay. And I love his that wife movie. stopped him. Like what the fuck are Listen, you watching? Black Knight? And I'm aware black Knight is a bad movie. Oh no. There are those movies that are just bad, but you still watch them. 
you watch them because they, they either they they have some kind of memory connect, connected to mm-hmm. them or you just remember some of the time. I like the I I also like the ten pole movies. Um, I like I by default will like every DC movie. Sorry. I don't know what to tell you. You know, he has. I'll even he, tell you. He hasn't I'll done a, he, a sh- he hasn't gone into his settings and adjust that. That's not- right. I'll tell you if it's a shitty movie, and I'll agree with you. I'm like, yeah, Suicide Squad kind of didn't make sense. I loved it though. You're right. You know, like it, I'm I, I'm that kind of dude that I can pretty much enjoy most things. But then every once in a while, there'll be a movie that everyone kind of liked. That I'm like, that movie's fucking trash. <laughs> Avatar comes to mind. <laughs> Everyone was Avatar fucking s- just circle jerking about fucking Avatar. I watched it over Steve's house and I'm just like, is it over? <laughs> like, it was so mind numbingly boring to me. I was like, fucking Pocahontas and space shit. <laughs> but teach us all. You know, I also love Howard the Duck. So you know, it's kind of <laughs> balances out. And I, I know hated that's Avatar, but I love Howard the yeah, Duck. Yeah, fuck it. I'm just a weird dude. <laughs> you know, I like what I like. But um, well, but like, yeah, there's, there's to, a to wrap up like, my end of it anyway. I was just gonna say for mine, you know, like I, every, a lot of people hate Napoleon Dynamite and Nacho Libre, and I'm sorry, but I love those movies. <laughs> I like Nacho Libre, but I didn't like Napoleon Dynamite. I liked it because it was just weird and quirky, and I just I dug it. Nacho Libre was just fucking ridiculous. Nacho Libre was ridiculous, <laughs> but it was funny. You know? It was funny. Yeah, it was funny in a silly way. I didn't like Napoleon Dynamite because I didn't like the main the main character kid. He was annoying. Yeah, well that that was the thing. Was like, Which is the whole point, yeah. you know. But I just I didn't I didn't dig him that much. I would not have voted for Pedro. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, but there's I mean there's a lot of movies that. Well, we're, we were watching an old movie today, and I forgot about. It. I can't remember the name of it. It was. It has um, Harrison Ford, and he's a bad guy, which is weird. And Michelle Pfeiffer, they're like husband and wife. Oh, the yeah, the I um. And he's trying to offer. Yeah, I know what movie. What lies beneath, or something like that. I think. Some I saw. Yeah. Oh yeah. And he's got this dead his girlfriend before he married Michelle Pfeiffer. Her ghost is coming back to try to help her. <laughs> I'm like. That's cheesy as shit, but I'm watching it, right. and the problem is, is Harrison Ford and Michelle Pfeiffer are the shit. So I'm fucking watching this ridiculous movie, and I'm like, damn, this is fucking intense. Well, the, they're like, why would you kill Michelle Pfeiffer in the fucking 80s? This brought us fucking fire. Like, I was freaking out. Dude. Like, I have, I didn't have no idea what that fucking was, and I sat down and watched the shit out of it. I was talking to my kids today. And I had to pull it up. Love smart TVs, by the way. I feel like I'm the master of the fucking universe. So we're watching TV, and and I'm like, hey, that chick that's in that movie we're watching, she was Catwoman. It's just, when was she Cat? I was like, oh, let me rephrase. She is Catwoman. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, there was no other one in well, movies. I don't, I don't know. And, I mean, um, you know, the one from The Dark Knight Rises. Uh, what's her name? Uh <laughs> Yeah, but only because she's hot, though. And, Her and attitude. When she got when she got out when she got on the uh, that motorcycle was like, oh, fuck, dude. But yeah, like, but Michelle Pfeiffer, hands down. Michelle Pfeiffer. So I so I brought this up to the kids, and I'm like, you know how everyone loves that scene where the Joker in the Dark Knight he's blowing up the hospital, and he's walking away from it, and they go, yeah, and I'm like, but there's that's the second best walking away from an explosion in a DC movie. Because the first is when Michelle Pfeiffer fucking cartwheels out of the building mm. and then tells everyone meow when the fucking thing blows up. <laughs> yeah. That shit's hot as fuck. <laughs> I just got hard. Okay. And like, he didn't even watch it. That was just, that's from uh, memory. <laughs> and I was a little baby child when I watched that. And I was hard as fuck. You better best fucking believe it. <laughs> no, but um, that's that's always my main thing on these. Like Steve, Steve is definitely more... Um, serious about movies in the way that that's his passion. He really enjoys films and stuff like that. And I, I appreciate the fuck out of that. <laughs> I love when people are in this shit. Um, and I have my own shit that I'm into too, but at the end of the day, just watch good movies, man. Yeah. You know, don't, it's not like, Oh, I'll go see the movie that everyone else is seeing. Cause you know, or, Oh, rotten tomatoes says I should see it. Fuck all that. dude. If a movie <laughs> looks dope, go see it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's there's a G- fucking movie with the chick from Juno in it that I want to see. I can't remember what it was. 
but it looked cool. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> but that's yeah. the thing. It's just like, you know, it's kind of like broaden your horizons. I mean, there's movies for every taste out there. And, yeah. you know, we can all still, we can all go and, you know, you know, propel Infinity War to, you know, the stratosphere that it is be- becoming the first, the biggest movie ever having a debut weekend worldwide and domestic. Um, but give other movies a chance. Throw your shekels over there. Yeah. You know, and, you know, get, you, you have enough time to watch more <laughs> than one movie. Like it's yeah. not, you know what I mean? Like, right. Or, or also too, I'm going to throw, read a book every once in a while. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could do that too. I'm actually, uh, uh, let down cause, um, a buddy of mine went and saw that ready player one. Oh, right. And I, I haven't seen it yet, but he was telling me all the stuff they took out from the book and it was too much. Like they were changing fundamental parts of the story and i was like i'm not interested now <laughs> like i'm just gonna i, I really like that book yeah. you know and i'm like i'm just gonna wait till it comes out on fucking blu-ray like wanna, i'm not gonna waste my money i still want to see it i mean i still have movie pass so i may see that and i still want, there's a um, chapaquitic i want to check out that looks really good um that's so. racist <laughs> <laughs> chapaquitic <laughs> sounds racist <laughs> that's with ted kennedy um racist no <laughs> <laughs> all right well all right well on that note watch watch more m- watch more than just you know tentpole movies i'm not saying anything bad i'm not saying don't go watch the fast and furious movies if that's your deal go see them but you know be that guy that doesn't call it a movie they call it a film <laughs> Be that guy. <laughs> Super pretentious and shit. Just go watch. It's like, excuse me, I'm not going to the movies. I'm going to the cinema. Get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> or be like Steve. I always used to make fun of him because he doesn't say theater like everybody else. He says theater. And I <laughs> only hear that in LA. There's no other place. Everyone else calls it theater. I say theater. But everyone else says theater. But in LA, it's the theater. I'm like, oh, <laughs> excuse me. The I'm going to go to the concession stand and get some popcorn and some soda <laughs> no i'm just gonna go to the concession <laughs> i love the little oh shit that's real that's over the top i went to the fucking movie theater um theater <laughs> the theater uh i forget see to me where i'm from you say theater if you're going to the um to a play right so when i when i moved here people would say that oh we're gonna go to the theater and i'm like the what the theater <laughs> we watch shakespeare or something um but we well, last time i went to the movies i they fucking done up this shit they got a bar in there i'm like what the fuck is this <laughs> shit like they're trying to make this a nightclub or what it was now crazy. coming to the center stage <laughs> oh, oh, oh i might like, like, get me a movie pass <laughs> <laughs> uh, <sighs> all right on that note that brings us to a what the actual fuck all right so this one comes from friendly atheist uh are you still there if so that means you didn't get raptured yesterday the good news is nobody else got raptured either (laughs) You would think that be, that come as a shock to Christian numerologist, whatever that means, David Mead, who's told the Daily Express earlier in the month that April 23rd was the big day, even though he made similar claims that didn't pan out for years before that. So what, uh, what does Mead have to say uh, the day after the latest rapture didn't happen? Well, he's already bracing for the egg in his face over the weekend, telling The Guardian that we have it all wrong. Numerous news age, um, organizations reported this week th- uh, that the world would be destroyed on the 23rd of April, citing David Mead, a Christian conspiracy theorist who has made a number of incorrect predictions about the end of the world. It, but in an interview with The Guardian, Mead um, dis- <laughs> describes these reports as, quote unquote, fake news. Mead, who has written 14 books, mostly focused on the end of the world and the mysterious planet Nerib- Neribru, the um, thought by some uh, thought by some to be on a collision course with Earth. Earth, you guys, we mentioned that before. Uh, said he does not. Uh, he does not, in fact, believe the world will end on the twenty third of April. Instead, me believes that the rapture, when Jesus will appear and save his followers, but reject the rest, will occur at some point between May and December of this year. 
Oh god, now he's now what is he, the cable company now? Yeah. <laughs> fucking rain. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna he's gonna come between he's gonna come on Thursday, but somewhere between eight and twelve. <laughs> you know. Jesus. <laughs> uh a uh, clever man. He knows a specific date would be silly, so he's going with a broader approach. Um, you know that meme of that uh, that uh, black guy that puts his hand to his head like uh, thinking. He has uh, they they use this one goes why give one date when you can give months. <laughs> uh, this further proves my theory that Jesus postponed his return for at least another century every time a believer ignores the Bible, which says no one can predict the date. And makes another baseless prediction. So, yeah. I, I think it's funny, these people, too, because it's like, oh, you just have to, you, it's in the, but you have to read the Bible. It's like, I, I have. <laughs> it, it says no one will know. Exactly. That's what it literally says. It literally it. says that, yeah, no <laughs> one will know. The only thing I think, oh, let me see if I can remember. He says, it's all in Matthew. Like there'll be like a war to end all wars. Everyone will hate Christ. He just says some some stuff will be, happen before it, but he never gives a date. Yeah, and I'm sorry if Jesus tells me no one knows. <laughs> I think no one knows. Right? Uh, yeah, you exactly. Because like, he says that you know, and anybody who comes in my name saying that they know is not. There'll be a lot. Yeah, there'll be a lot of people saying they're me. Yeah. So it's, it's like, like going. Um, okay, so I guess you didn't read that part. Is what I'm going to assume. <laughs> Oh, because it's it's like any conspiracy theorist do they 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 read something too much and they start seeing shit it's like a stop to it, me dude. just hearing Christian conspiracy theorists just seems a little seems off to me yeah it just seems a little oxymoronic like like you're you're literally as a religious person right. you get an instruction manual yeah like <laughs> that's and true it, and I learned <laughs> from wise men at one point that Bible stands for basic instructions before leaving earth hmm. and i learned that from the wu-tang clan <laughs> so uh, and that is actually that track is the last track on the album liquid swords just, you know just if you want to listen to it okay. um <laughs> there's actually i i i, I um, obtained the liquid swords album <laughs> because um it's an old it's from like 95 it's a jizza album but mm. anything they do is wu-tang and um there's a meme, and I forgot to share it to you. It's so funny, but it said uh, it was a courtroom, and, and there's two pictures, and <laughs> this woman's just holding a baby, and it says at the bottom, it says, "Does anyone have anything to say on this case or whatever?" And the last picture, you see the baby has grabbed the mic, mm -hmm. and it's this. Uh, I just want to say the best Wu Tang albums, Liquid Swords. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> It was so fucking random, dude. I was crying. I was laughing so fucking hot. Uh, moving on. I call this one Irish luck. Racist. Even though, even though his last name, McWilliams, is Scottish. But, you know, whatever. We're, we're all Racist. cousins at some Racist. point. Racist. <laughs> For some reason, the animal kingdom must hate Dylan McWilliams. On Thursday, the 20-year-old resident of Grand Junction, Colorado, was bitten by a shack while boogie boarding off the island of Ka Kaua uh, Hawaii, whatever. Kauai? Yeah. This is less than a year after McWilliams was attacked by a 300-pound black bear while camping in Boulder County, Colorado, according to CBS Denver. McWilliams was about 30 yards from, sh from shore when he was knocked off his board and suddenly felt a searing pain in his leg. At first, I panicked. He told the Honolulu Star advisor, "I didn't didn't know if I had if I lost half my leg or what." McWilliams said he believes the animal that attacked him was a six to eight foot tiger shark. He saw the, he saw the stripes and he kicked it hard before attempting to swim to shore. That was the scariest part. I did I didn't I didn't know where the shark was. And I didn't know if he would come after me again, he told the paper. McWilliams did make it to the shore where, where bystanders helped him get to an emergency room. Although the injury wasn't life-threatening, McWilliams suffered some deep cuts based on the photo, the photos he posted on Facebook. Although an experience like that might make some afraid of future ocean swims, McWilliams was mad the cuts kept him from boogie boarding. I'm just mad that I can't get back in the water for a couple of days. So we're going to stop there. Um, and it was later on, he was bit by a radioactive spider. Right. <laughs> so he is not unlucky. He's just putting himself. 
in situations where he's in danger. I am never going to get bitten by a tiger shark. I can guarantee you that because I'm never going to swim in water where they are. I'm never going to get attacked by a black bear because I'm not going to camp in woods where black bears are. This guy is just – he's not an idiot. He's just a thrill seeker. Yeah. You know, And there's a certain level of risk that comes into that. He, I guarantee you that the only dude who's been bitten by a shark and fucking attacked by a bear. If you're in those places – the sh- hey man, shit goes down in the woods. What, what, what you they, want? What they failed to mention in the in the article was that he was attempting to be Ace Ventura, and That's he, right. you know, he was like, "Come to me, my animal friends." <laughs> you know? Bumblebee tuna. <laughs> <laughs> God, those movies. Those movies were great when I watched them. I've tried to watch them again. <laughs> they don't hold up as well. Yeah, they don't hold up as much. I'm, I think I grew up too much, and I'm just like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The first one holds up a little bit better than the second. Yeah, the second one's ridiculous. <laughs> but still, yeah. Bumblebee. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think I tried to watch the second one. And, and once he um, evacuated the rhino suit, I was like, I think I'm done. <laughs> I, think, I think the nostalgia <laughs> went off. Um, so that's it for this week, guys, girls, whatever in between. Um, please rate. Anything you want, but you know you want to rate high. Come on. <laughs> on iTunes or wherever you get the show. If you're new to the show, you can find all of our old episodes on Stitcher, Apple Podcast app, and Google Play Music, as well as our website, thelazygeeks.com. We're also on social media, guys. Twitter and Instagram, both under the name The Lazy Geeks, one word. Don't forget to follow our Facebook and Google Plus pages. Um, we want feedback, of course, so send it to thegeeks at thelazygeeks.com. And you can find me on the interwebs on Twitter at a middle age geek and Instagram middle age underscore geek. And uh, I'm on Twitter at Sapien TLG. And you can email me at Adam at the lazy And be sure to tune in on Friday for our latest adventure on the away team. Uh, we'll also be our, also with our 300th episode approaching pretty much like two weeks away. Now uh, we want to hear from you guys. So send comments, emails, uh, Leave us a voicemail at 818-495-5637. We'll share all of it on that episode. So that is it for us this week. So until next time, peace out. (laughs) 